When creating a quiz, it's important to take note of what settings are available to you to best utilize your options. These settings can be found in three main areas to the right when creating or editing a quiz. In the Availability Dates and Conditions section, you can add a start date to determine when students can access this quiz. You can also enter in an end date to determine when students will no longer have access to the quiz. In this area, you can also add a release condition to create criteria on what students will need to complete before gaining access to the quiz. If you would like to provide special access to certain students on this quiz, which includes extra time, or extra attempts, you can do so by selecting Manage Special Access. A video on how to use this tool can be found in the description of this video. You can also add a password to the quiz to prevent those without the password from accessing it. In addition, you can also select an IP range to restrict this quiz to a certain range of IP address numbers. Please note, however, that this range cannot apply to a specific room or building on campus. In the Timing and Display tab, you have access to set a time limit for your exam. In addition, after setting the time, you can choose timer settings to access additional options. These options include making the quiz asynchronous, meaning the timer starts when the learner launches the quiz, or making the quiz synchronous, meaning the timer starts on the date of the start date. You can also choose the behavior of what happens when the time limit expires. Your options are to automatically submit the quiz attempt flag the attempt as exceeded time limit and allow the learner to continue working, or do nothing, and the time limit won't be enforced. When you are finished, select OK. Back in the Timing and Display section, you can also adjust the amount of questions that will show per page. And below, you can choose to automatically shuffle quiz questions. In the display area, you can choose to allow hints if you have them associated with your questions. And you can also choose to disable email, instant messages, and alerts within Brightspace during the student's attempt. Finally, you can also add a header and footer to the quiz. In the Attempts and Completion section, you can choose the amount of attempts your students will have on this quiz by selecting Manage Attempts. You can allow students to have 1 to 10 attempts or unlimited attempts. If you have multiple attempts enabled, you can choose how the overall grade will be calculated. Your options are to use the highest attempt score, the lowest attempt score, the average of all attempts, the first attempt score, or the last attempt score. In addition, for multiple attempts, you can also allow students to only have to answer questions that they got incorrect on their previous attempt. By selecting Attempt Conditions, you have access to Advanced Options. Advanced Conditions allow you to choose the score range a student needs to be in on their first attempt 
in order for them to gain access to a second attempt. For example, I could allow a second attempt only if a student scores between 0 and 70% on their first attempt. If they scored higher than 70, then this second attempt would not be available to them. When you are finished, you can select OK. If you use quiz categories, you can choose which category this quiz will be assigned to. Please note, however, that quiz categories are not the same type of categories that appear in grades. And finally, if you would like to receive a notification email when there is a quiz attempt submitted, you can type in your email in this box. In the Evaluation and Feedback tab, you can choose to auto-publish attempt results immediately upon completion. You can also choose to synchronize published results to the gradebook. These are recommended settings if you would like students to see the results immediately. In addition, on Publish, you can choose to display to learners their attempt grade as well as what type of questions to display when feedback is published. Your options are incorrect questions only with their correct answers, incorrect questions only without their correct answers, all questions with correct answers, and all questions without correct answers. You also have the option to not show any questions at all if you wish. Further down, you can choose to customize the quiz results display page, which allows you to display a custom message when attempts are received, additional question display options, and statistics to students. You can also manage learning objectives in this area as well. When you are finished with your settings, you can choose to make your quiz visible to students if you wish, and then save and close your changes. If you would like to enable Respondus Lockdown Browser for your quiz, you can do so by selecting Lockdown Browser in the main quiz area. Then you can select the arrow next to your quiz that you want to enable Respondus on and choose Settings. From here, you can choose Require Respondus Lockdown Browser for this exam. Optionally, you also have access to Advanced Settings and you can also add a password to access the exam. In the proctoring section, you can choose to require Respondus Monitor to have automatic proctoring or to allow instructor live proctoring. Thank you for watching. For more Brightspace related content, please subscribe to our channel.